welcome back to episode six, I believe, of UFC Addicts. We are here tonight to break down UFC Fight Night 138 from New Brunswick, Canada. Volkan Ostemir versus Anthony Lionheart Smith. My name is Aaron, and uh, here's my co-host, Layden. How's it going, bud? What's up, guys? What's up? I'm buzzing for this card, man. I'm ready. Yeah, I feel like it's been forever. What has it been? Two weeks? Free. It's been free now. Three weeks. It is amazing how we are not going to have to say that for eight straight weekends. For real. The rest of the year is just Uh, packed. The rest of the year has MMA. And as Mm -hmm. far as I'm concerned, I mean, I've been trying to satiate my MMA with a little bit of PFL here and there. Mm -hmm. Uh, I actually went to the card here in D.C. It was the... Um, light or the middleweight and uh, light heavyweight playoffs. It was a quarter and semifinals, so fighters were actually fighting twice in one night. That's crazy. So yeah, I just like imagined that happening in the UFC, and then immediately stopped imagining it. <laughs> um, it was. It's just. It's really. I mean, it's entertaining, but mm-hmm. it also leads to things like um, one of the uh, finalists is Vinny Magalhaes. Do you remember Vinny Magalhaes? I don't. Yeah, he fought in the Ultimate Fighter in a very brief stint in the UFC. He got starched a bunch. Oh, wow. Um, but he's, he's a BJJ wizard. He's fighting, anyways, this is UFC related. He's fighting Sean O'Connell. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's uh, the finals of the light heavyweight. And don't they get uh, a, a million pound? Or is that a million dollars? Oh wow! US dollars, one million U.S. dollars for one of these two, for going through. You know, I mean, neither one of them went through anybody who was of any note. I mean, Sean O'Connell, talk about a move for you know some of these guys in the UFC who are just wasting away. I got to question what they're thinking. Uh, mm-hmm. What up, Glover Teixeira? Uh, guys like that. I mean, it's just like, what are you doing? You're not. I mean. Sean O'Connell's fighting for a million dollars on December 31st. That's crazy. Uh, but, yeah, anyways, um, these smaller cards not quite not quite doing the same thing as UFC here. So uh, I'm very excited for this uh, mm-hmm. card here. Um, yep. It's, uh, I mean, main event down to the first fight, I think these are some excellent, excellent matchups. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm just glad to be... Uh, you know, be able to talk MMA again. Yeah, man. We're, we're back to the hardcore cards now. We're back to the yeah, hardcore okay. fans. And, you know, it's been a, good, a long three weeks from the uh, Connor Habib. And that was just, you know, that's died down a little bit now. All, all that uh, commotion after the fight. But, yeah, I'm, I can't I'm excited. That was man. the last card. That just seems like that was months ago. Mm-hmm. So much talk. So much. Yeah, and I'm just, it's just lovely with this fight. You're just coming in with... Two guys who you don't have to wonder if they're going to show up and fight. Not that we did with Connor and Khabib, but I mean, you know, it's just like it's going to be a good fight. They don't need to talk to sell it. The fight's, you know, going to, you know, sell itself. And but this is a hardcore card, and uh, that's who, you know, frankly, we're here to cater to. I don't think we're catering to too many people who, you know, yeah. are not sure. that. So we appre- we appreciate the uh, passionate fans like ourselves who. You know, just we enjoy breaking down the fights. Uh, been doing pretty well so far um, mm-hmm. since we've started this up, too. So, you know, I think we're both in the 70s range with regards yeah. to prediction mm-hmm. rates. So, uh, you know, we take it pretty serious. And, you know, let's. Uh, I'm ready to break down this card. What about you? I'm ready, bro. Let's jump in. Um, you sure. want to break down Stevie Ray? Yeah, yeah. So uh, first fight of the night uh, we have between Steven... Braveheart Ray and Jessen Ayari, I believe. Yes, that's right. Uh, or Jessen, I don't exactly know how to pronounce that, but uh, a little bit about Mr. Braveheart. Uh, he's 28 years old. He's got a 21 and 8 record. Um, four of those losses coming by way of sub. He is on a two fight losing streak currently to Cajun Johnson by a very close decision that. I think he could have gotten the nod for it. it was a split, but mm-hmm. you know, regardless, I mean, definitely a well fought fight. And Cajun Johnson's no stranger to being on the wrong side of some decisions. So, um, and he also got knocked out by Paul Felder. That's really the only time that uh, we've seen 
Stephen Ray look really, really bad inside the octagon. Like, look completely out of his depths, actually. Mm-hmm. I think other than that, you know, most fights he really comes to scrap. He's a former Cage Warriors champion, so uh, lightweight champion. We have a couple of those guys on this card. Uh, Chris Fishgold's fighting later as well. Um, but big fan of Cage Warriors. Um, and uh, he's, you know, a little bit about Stevie. He's not the most technical fighter. Um, you know, definitely gets him into trouble against guys with a better game plan or better camp or, you know, guys with good movement like Johnson seem to put him into a close fight. But I think uh, he has a good matchup here against Jessen. I don't know a ton about him, to be honest. Um, mm-hmm. Although I'm wondering how big he's going to be coming down from 170. But looking at kind of the tape of him against uh, Till, he did look like a undersized 170 or but he was fighting a 185 or until mm-hmm. so who knows but um i think it's gonna be a close fight here um but uh, or i you know i'm not sure how close but i think he'll, he'll be close to getting a finish i should say and uh by him i mean stevie ray so i'm gonna take stevie ray by a decision or late uh tko Nice. Okay, so we have Yesin Ayari. Um, he comes into this fight one and one inside the UFC. Um, he's fought two Englishmen, um, one being Jim Wallhead, who he uh, got a victory over, and he also fought Darren Till. Um, he went 15 minutes with Darren Till and lost the decision, so no shame in that. Um, and yeah, like you said earlier, he'll be stepping down to 155 for this fight, so he's going to be, you know, naturally bigger in this fight. Um, and I like his chances. I, I really do like his chances in this fight because Stevie Ray, you know, we, we've seen in his career, he, he doesn't like to take the fight to the ground. Um, you know, he's not exactly terrible if it goes there, but I just don't see Stevie Ray um, having a game plan to take down Yesin Ayari. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I, you know, Stevie Ray actually has eight submissions in his uh, 14 yeah. finishes. Wow. That's, so it's that's, kind of interesting. Mm-hmm, he has yeah. more fi- more submissions than TKOs. Yeah, he's he's not bad there at all. You know, if, if you want to take him down, he'll he'll definitely give you a, a good go on the floor. But, you know, he's just one of those guys that walks forward and, you know, he just wants to fight. And, you know, with his loss to Cajun Johnson, Cajun Johnson just played the outside game, you know, scoring from the outside. Um, you know, got into Paul Felder's face. They had a real good fight and, you know, got caught. So I, I feel like it's going to be mainly on the feet. And, you know, for Yesin Ayari, I just feel he needs to be the bully in there. You know, stamp his dominance nice and early and let Stevie Ray know, you know, look, I'm bigger than you. And if you want to fight, let's go. My punches are harder than yours. Um, but, you know, it's going to be a close fight, I believe. But I'm going to give the underdog a nod on this one. I'm going to take Yesin Ayari to hand Stevie Ray his third loss in a row. So, yeah, wow. I'm disagreeing early. Do you think uh, Stevie Ray gets uh, gets cut after this if he loses decisively? Uh, I don't think he does. I don't think okay. he does. I think it would, it would be bring fight. him to five and four. It would bring him to five and four in the UFC. So, definitely, if mm-hmm. not on the you know, not on the edge. I think whichever guy loses this fight is going to definitely feel some, feel his seat getting a little warmer. Mm-hmm. Um with regards to the odds, they opened up at a uh, pretty heavy favorite for Stevie Ray at minus 208. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, and now uh, it's down to 165, I see, mm-hmm. according yep. to Bovada is what we're using. So Bovada um, and uh, Justin's coming back at plus 135. So mm-hmm. definitely yeah. the money's starting to shift towards Justin a little bit. But yeah, I, we'll see. I feel it would be more embarrassing for Yesin Ayari to lose. But, you know, that doesn't really, it makes sense because it contradicts the odds. Um, but, yeah, I, I think if Steve Array loses, I, I don't think he'll be cut. But this is an interesting fight, you know, definitely, because Yesin's uh, stepping down. Um, it'll be interesting. Okay, well, very quick uh, disagreement, so welcome mm-hmm. back. <laughs> all right, uh, that's all I got to say about this matchup. You ready to move on to yep. the heavyweights? Okay, so we have uh, Bulla. Uh, the wrestler, Ar- Arhan Buller versus Marcelo Golm. Um, I'll be breaking down Arhan Buller. Um, he comes into this fight 1-1 one and one inside the UFC. Uh, a win over Luis Enrique, who I broke down a few weeks ago. Um, and he's got a loss to Adam uh, Wazorkic. That's a really tough name to pronounce. 
Um, uh, the the big guy, the Polish guy yeah. who got the mm-hmm. Uma Flata. The Plata, yeah, yeah. He, I've never seen an Uma Flata so given I know, away. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and um, <laughs> yeah, so Buller, Arhan Buller, very dominant wrestler, um, extremely strong heavyweight. Um, you know, in his last fight, I've got to talk about that Uma Plata. Um, you know, he he found top position fairly easy he got the top position fairly easy and after about two and a half to three minutes of top position um just out of nowhere was um put into omoplata and forced to tap and then when you watch the replay um of how this happened you realize wow technically arhan bulla is not at the level in wrestling in mma than he was outside of mma um technically you know He's a very strong wrestler, but the way his his hands were on the floor, his arms were spaced out, he wasn't compact in top position. It, you know, he he really got a reality check. Um, yeah, it was it was bad. It I was. mean, he almost he almost gave it up several times before that, mm-hmm. or did he almost give up other submission like yep. crazy submissions? Yep. Like it, either it, way, it was it looked fixed. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying it was, but no. he just like. That's what it looks like sometimes when you just have no technique. But mm-hmm. go ahead, sorry. Yeah, like, like you say, he, his his MMA wrestling technique is is not there, you know. And after that reality check, we we don't know, you know. Did he go back to the drawing board and really work on? Well, I've transitioned into MMA now. This is a little different. Or is he going to be the same guy? Um, Marcelo Golm, you know, he has submission wins. Um, most likely better jiu-jitsu. So, you know, I've, I've got to give this one to Marcelo Golm just based off of what I saw in Buller's uh, last last fight. It was just, it was so average and it was hard to watch him be put into, into an armor plotter like that. It was just, you know, I, I can't take him. He needs to prove himself to me at this point. Um, he'll probably be the favorite, which I'm, I'm surprised about. Um, but yeah, I, I can't take him here. So I'm going to take Marcelo Golm via decision. Yeah, I mean, the heavyweight division, you know, not the best fighters in the UFC. And right here, you got two pretty average heavyweights. But this is actually a, a really good matchup. It's really hard to break down, too. Mm-hmm. Um, who's, you know, I mean, because Golm, he is, uh, he's a young guy. He's 26 years old. He's 6 and 1. Uh, five TKOs and one sub, so he's had finishes in all of his fights, um, you know, uh, and his one loss came to Timothy Johnson, who's an excellent MMA wrestler. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, um, you know, he's not with Bellator, but, I mean, he, Timothy Johnson, you know, is a re- you know, I think a better MMA wrestler than Bueller. Bueller, obviously, everybody would say is a better amateur wrestler. Yes. So it just shows the difference in MMA wrestling and you know, amateur wrestling here. So, but that's Golem's one loss. Golem's uh, win came against Christian Colombo. So it's like, mm-hmm. he, it's exactly. I mean, he he finished him by rear naked choke. So he finished, and I believe Colombo's a black belt in jiu-jitsu. Yeah. Um, so, um, you know, decent finish there. So I think, you know, he definitely has shown he can finish with a sub. He's more dangerous on the feet. And I have not seen anything from Bueller that may, that scares me of him on the feet. The only thing I could see him Bueller doing is laying and praying. And I, mm-hmm. and I mean, other than that, I think Golm is the better MMA fighter. And I think this is one of these fights that you can bet on Golm and feel pretty confident in betting in the underdog. Um, I think he can catch Bueller early and, uh, I think he'll finish him somehow, whether he rocks him on the feet and then ends up finishing him with the submission because he's dazed and confused and goes, to, you know, panics to the ground. Or, you know, he finishes him straight up with a KO on the feet. Um, mm-hmm. I think he's better just about everywhere other than wrestling. And that's, you know, Bueller's going to have to go in there and do 15 minutes of wrestling, which he could do. But um, I like Golem to get a finish here early. So, nice. um, yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, unless maybe Bueller really just froze up and comes into this fight much better. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, I agree. He's kind of got to prove something to me a little more. Yeah. Um, and uh, sure enough, the odds uh, opened, you know, with this being a very close fight. The money has moved towards Bueller as it's gone. So it started as minus 175 favorite for Bueller. He's now 
at a minus two twenty five favorite on Bovada. Wow. Um, Golem's co- Golem's coming back at plus one seventy five underdog. So I would, um, you know, with it trending towards uh, the money moving towards Bueller, I'd wait till later in the week if you're looking to bet on Golem. But I think Golem is a good underdog pick here. I really do. Yep, I agree. So 100%. I, I will take. I'll take Golem and add a little juice, and he'll get the finish, I think. Nice. Okay. We move on to the next bout, and that is at 155, correct? Um, correct. Okay, yeah. Tay Edwards, he's making his UFC debut. Uh out of uh, you know Dana White's Contender Series, he's fighting against Don Madge, also making his UFC debut. Mm-hmm. Don Madge, that's a that's a cool name. Um, so, um, anyways, uh, Tay Edwards, he's uh, 28 years old. He's fighting out at the MMA Lab. Uh, he's six and one. All six of his wins coming by TKO. He um, came off Dana White's Contender Series, like I said, where he had a 28 second uh, KO finish. Uh, so he's coming into this uh, bout touted as a solid wrestler with uh, good, you know, powerful strikes. His one loss came by decision in his second fight. Otherwise, all six of his wins came within three minutes uh, in the first round. So I haven't heard much about his opponents, um, you know, and his the opponent he lost to, yeah, hasn't really done anything either, so. You know, it being the second fight of his, you know, MMA career, who knows. But uh, he looked good on the Contender Series for the 28 seconds I saw. And uh, he looks to be a pretty athletic, um, powerful wrestler. He looks, you know, kind of to, you know, be in a similar vein as, you know, his stable mates like Benson Henderson. You know, so just a powerful wrestler using uh, using good, diverse striking. So, um, yeah, I think... Uh, Tay Edwards, I believe, was originally supposed to fight someone else, so I believe Don Madge is coming in on late notice, but uh, I'm going to take Edwards to uh, have a showcase KO here and uh, burst onto the scene a little bit. Nice. Okay, so we've got uh, Don Madge um, coming into this uh, Octagon debut with a pro record of 7-3. and three. Um, Yeah, quite a tall lightweight, uh, stands at six foot one, I believe. Um, he isn't Vic size, but you know, it's still quite a tall, lightweight. Um, yeah, he was scheduled to uh, make his octagon debut back on the Darren Till card in Liverpool, and he was uh, supposed to fight David Tamer. So you know, just reading into that, um, he's got an easier debut here. So I'm not too sure what's going to happen here. I don't really know too much about either guy. Um, I know Tay Edwards was on the uh, Contender series. Um, but yeah, this is, you know, for me, it's really a pick em. You know, I can't read too much into this. Um, both guys uh, are seasoned as each other. Both guys up and comers. Um, yeah, it's going to be a fun, lightweight fight. But yeah, I don't really know too much about Don Madge. Um, seven and three before the UFC. It's, it's not a great record, you know, picking up three losses before hitting the big time. Um, but yeah, um, I'm going to stick with uh, Tay Edwards. Um yeah. But yeah, it's really a pick 'em in my opinion. But I'll take Tay Edwards via a decision. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, yeah, I agree with you. And uh, I mean, the odds are heavily in Tay Edwards' oh, wow. corner. And I think that's, uh, you know, just a little bit of familiarity from the Contender Series, I'd imagine. But I mean, he's a minus 500 favorite now. They don't, oh, he opened wow. at minus. He opened at minus 300. It's moved to minus 500, minus 525 at other places, I see. Um, Madge is a heavy, heavy underdog. So uh-huh. I wouldn't be mad at all at someone taking a shot at, you know, yeah. Madge here, to be honest with you. You know, you might as well. Um, you know, I don't think that Ted, you know, but maybe we'll see after this fight that Ted Edwards well deserves that. But. You know, I think, you know, two guys making their debut, you never know how a guy's going to look at, you know, and it's hard to find, you know, footage on either one of these guys' mm-hmm. fights so far in the UFC. So I wouldn't be mad. Someone yeah. taking a shot, you know, you know, there's a couple, you know, I think all three of, you know, the fights so far, you could justify betting on the underdog. Mm-hmm. Um, you yeah, know, it's, it's definitely so. well worth a shot because 
you know, he was he was going to fight David Tamer, and considering yeah, but... he's a minus five hundred here, what what would he have been against David Tamer? So, and I what, mean, what yes. warranted that debut as well? You know, what what did he do previous to to be given David Tamer in a debut? Yeah, you know, um, but we'll see. But you know, even in spite of the odds, I you know would go with Edwards, but I would not bet on it mm-hmm. at all. There's no way I bet on Edwards at minus five hundred. That's not happening. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, so we'll move on to the next fight. Uh, here we got uh, we've got Talita Bernardo and Sarah Cheesecake Marias or Maras. Yes. Marats, okay. Um, you're going to be breaking down Cheesecake? Yes. Okay, so we have Sarah Maraz, uh comes into this fight 2-2 two and two inside the UFC, 5-3 um, and three overall. Um, notable wins coming over Juliana Pena, which was outside the UFC, uh, and Ashley Evans-Smith. Um, losses coming to Juliana Pena also. Uh, she lost in a rematch later on. Um, she's lost to Raquel Pennington, Jessica Andrade, uh, Lucy Pudilova. So, you know, she's lost to some fairly decent girls. Um, yeah, she's been an underdog in all four fights in the UFC, which is surprising. Um, winning two of them, losing two of them. So, you know, not, not too bad there. Um, I feel she'll be a favorite in this match and rightly so because, you know, she, she, she is a grinder. Um, She's not bad at all. You know, she's pretty fell, well-rounded everywhere. Um, yeah, I like this matchup for her. Uh, Bernardo, you know, she's she's pretty average pretty much everywhere. Um, yeah, and I just think Miraz can do something in this fight. And, yeah, she's she's got to break that record. You know, 2-2, two and two, it's, it's not looking too good. And, yeah, fair matchup. Probably a showcase matchup for Miraz. And... Yeah, I'm going to take a finish in round number two via submission. All right. So a little bit about Talita Bernardo. Uh, five and three record. Four of those wins coming by submission. She's 0-2 in the UFC with losses coming to Aldana by decision and Mariana or Marianne Renault by late TKO with five seconds to go in the third round. So... Uh, she's a big 135-er uh, and primarily a grappler, and I think she'll look to kind of out-muscle and out-work, uh, you know, Morass Mar- here. So I, uh, you know, I'm not sure this will be the most exciting fight, and uh, I actually think she may be successful in this matchup. Maybe I'm underrating Sarah also, like a lot of the odds makers have with the underdogs, but... Uh, mm-hmm. I think uh, Toledo's going to get her first win here and uh, grind out a decision. I don't think it's going to be particularly entertaining. Um, but, yeah, I just, uh, I'm just not quite sure how good Mar- Sarah Morass is. Um, and, uh, you know, Toledo has seemed, you know, to look pretty decent in some of her fights, especially the one against Mariana Renau, who I think is a little bit better, but We'll see. I mean, I'm just taking a shot here at the underdog with Toledo. Mm-hmm. Nice. Not feeling super confident in it. Nice. So let's move on to the next fight. I'll have a lot more to say about those two. Those two fights. Uh, not you know. Hopefully they're good fights, but you know mm-hmm. we'll see. It was hard to exactly break those two down. So, on to the next one here. We got Chris Fishgold versus Calvin Qatar. I'll be breaking down Mr. Fishgold, uh, making his UFC debut out of Liverpool. He's a 5'8 Cage Warriors featherweight champion, uh, making his UFC debut. 17-1 and one with 12 submission wins. Uh, so, he's a grappler, for sure. Um, he comes into this... His UFC debut with a seven-fight win streak. Um, he's, you know, a shorter uh, featherweight, so he likes to get on side and use his power on the feet and then get it to the ground. Uh, he's got, you know, he's pretty quick as well. And um, I like, one thing I like is he defended his title multiple times before coming over. Um, you know, definitely an interesting matchup here with Calvin because Calvin's, you know, a taller featherweight. Um and, you know, so it's, you know, the taller, 
you know, striker versus the shorter grappler, you know, kind of here. And uh, I, you know, think that this is definitely a tough debut for Fishgold, um, you know. And uh, I I really, you know, as much as I am a fan of Fishgold and Cage Warriors, uh, it's hard for me to take them here. Um, and uh, I got to give Qatar the nod here to get a uh, finish here in the second round. I think he's going to keep on the end of his strikes and uh, hurt him pretty bad and finish him in the second. Nice. Okay, so we've got Calvin Cater uh, comes into this fight 2-1 and one inside the UFC. Um, impressive wins over Touchy Feely and Shane Burgos. Um, in that fight against Shane, uh, just... If you if you've not seen that fight, you need to go back and watch that fight because a great fight. Oh man, battle of the jabs, just fighting in the pocket. It was just brutal from the the minute the fight started. Just oh crazy. Um, yeah, Calvin's loss to Renato Moicano. Uh, that was in New York. I was there for that fight. Just that was a crazy fight. Um, Calvin Cater started really good, but you know Renato just took over and completely destroyed his lower leg for literally 15 minutes just it was horrible you know um but yeah really good fight um yeah this like like you said this is a really tough debut for chris uh fish gold um calvin katie you know he he's looked nothing but impressive um in all of his fights uh even even in his loss against renato moicano you know you've renato is such a great guy at 145 you know basically two minutes away from beating uh, Brian Ortega. Um, yep. But yeah, this really tough debut. I don't know too much about Chris Fishgold. What you said, you know, I, I knew none of that. Um, but yeah, you, you know, I've got to go with the guy who, who's impressed me, you know, Calvin Cater. Um, I'd be amazed if uh, Chris Fishgold could pull off a uh, Alex Hernandez or something like that, but... You know, nine times. He's just not that kind of fighter. He's not that. I mean, mm-hmm. if he does pull off the upset, it's gonna. Yeah. You know, be you know by you know showing off his grappling and getting it down there. I think he's not gonna mm-hmm. come out. And, but anything can happen, of course. So. Yeah, like nine times out of ten, when these newcomers come, you know, and they've been given a very, very, very respectable matchup, and you don't know too much about the newcomer, nine times out of ten, it goes against them. Unless you're Alex Hernandez or, you know, unless you're maybe Chris Fishgold, if, if he can prove it. But, yeah, I've got to stick with Calvin Qatar here and I'm going to take a round one. So I'm, I'm not giving Fishgold as much respect as you, but, yeah, I'm going to take a round one TKO. All right, fair enough. Um, you know, uh, we go to the odds and uh, Calvin Qatar opened at minus 455. Um you know, and now the odds are down to minus 280. Oh, wow. So they are quickly shifting towards Mr. Fishgold a little bit more. So I don't know if they just started a little bit stiff or what it is, but I mean, I got, you know, Fishgold is now plus 210 underdog. So, um, you know, we'll see. I mean, it seems that I'm advising on picking a lot of underdogs on this card. I'm not mm-hmm. doing that on purpose. I don't look at the odds until after I make my assessment and pick my fight. But mm-hmm. just coincidentally, I mean, but, you know, I can't pick Fish Gold here as much as I want to. I'm just giving him respect to make it a couple rounds, though. So, um, but, yeah, um, we'll, you know, we'll see. Uh, I think it's going to, I think this could be a really good fight. Um, you know, I hope that Fish Gold makes it a good fight and uh, has a good showing. Yep, I agree with you, bro. Okay, so moving on. Yep, we've got uh, Tibal Guti, I believe, versus Nazrat Hakprasat. That's also a tough name. Um, So we've got, I'll be breaking down Nazrat. Um, He comes into this fight 1-1 inside the UFC, uh, losing to Marcin Held and recently beating uh, Mark Diakisi. Um, I was there live for that fight in Germany against Mark Diakisi, and wow, wow, Nasrat is just wow. That was so legit. That performance was just great. You know, he had Mark Diakisi backing up, uh, circling for 15 minutes. Um, really nice forward pressure uh, combinations. Beautiful. Um, he even hurt Mark Diakisi quite badly at one point, and yeah, just. 
Really, really amazing performance. Um, I'm a little bit confused by Nazrat though, because he looks the clone of uh, Calvin Gastelum, and that that confuses yeah. me. Um, Mini Gastelum. Mm-hmm. And he lost to Marcy. Kind of fights Hell. like him, huh? Yeah, he did lose him. Yeah, he, hopefully he strikes a fight like him. Yeah, for real, man. Um, yeah, so he he looks like Calvin Gastelum. That's confusing. He lost to Marcy in Hell. That's confusing. But put on an absolute amazing performance against uh, Mark Diakisi. So. You know, I'm going to put down his loss to Marcin Held to, you know, Octagon Jitters, you know, who's making his debut. I'm going to scrap that from his from his record and just basically go off of what I saw live in Germany against Mark Diakisi because that performance was great. Um, like I said, forward pressure, just brilliant. Um, his wrestling looked fairly decent. His combinations, just, he, he looked great all night. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to give him the win here. I believe this is a showcase fight for him based off of his performance in Germany. Um, and, yeah, I'm going to give him a dominant uh, decision win. Okay, fair enough. Uh, so, a little bit about Thibault Guti. He's uh, 31, fights at Jackson Winklejohn. Uh, he's 12 and 4. His record in the UFC less than stellar at 1 and 4. Uh, he's been finished three times, once by TKO, twice by submission. He has a loss to Super Sage Northcutt in his last fight in February. Um, and, uh, he's, uh, he was a pretty good kickboxer who prior to UFC had shown good potential for, you know, even, you know, had some submissions in his repertoire. But, uh, I think this is, you know, can be a pretty close fight here, actually. Um, I'm not exactly sold on Nazareth's hype, um, which, uh, you know, I feel like he has a little bit more after this Diakisi fight. Um, but, you know, I think that Gucci is in a lot of ways a lot tougher of a matchup to prepare for than a guy like Diakisi is or a guy like Marcin Held. Mm-hmm. With Marcin Held, you're going to deal with a lot of leg locks and uh, grappling attempts and, you know, with a guy like Dia Casey, you're, you know, dealing with just the stand up. You know, a guy like Gucci can go everywhere, you know, and he's definitely had some struggles in the UFC here. Um, but uh you know, I think that Nazareth, you know, we'll see how he looks here. Nazareth's only twenty three years old, so he's getting better with every fight, hopefully. But um, you know, uh I think it's gonna be a close fight. Um and I think uh Guti uh, has a much better chance than I think the odds are probably giving him, but uh, I will go with Nazareth to get a to get you know a submission win here after exa- after exhausting him with uh, his wrestling. Mm-hmm. So um, Guti, you know, uh, has shown he's very beatable inside the octagon at one and four. Uh, so you know, makes it pretty hard to pick him here. Um, and uh, sure enough, uh, we take a look at the odds and. Uh, Nazareth's approaching a thousand. Wow. So yeah, ten to one favorite. Jesus. And that is not. I do not feel he is a ten to one favorite. No, he's um, not. But wow. Like <laughs> I, like I just don't at, at all. I think that uh, you know, yeah, Guti is one in four, but uh, this is one I would definitely bet on if you can get Guti around seven or eight hundred plus seven or eight hundred. Like I would. You know, I'm not telling anybody how to spend their money, but they're listening to us for betting advice. That is one I would bet on personally. Mm-hmm. Um, I just don't think out, but maybe Nazareth comes out and blows the doors off him. Who knows? But we'll see. Yeah, nice. Um, but um, yeah, I uh, you know not you know again. There's you know a few fights on here with guys who've you know fun you know he, there was obviously the debut with you know Edwards and Madge where we didn't know a lot about him, but. You know, guys or gals like, you know, Bernardo and Morass or, you know, Gucci and, ha- you know, Hazaret here. You know, it's guys who we've seen or gals who we've seen in the Octagon, but we still don't know quite a whole lot about. So, you know, I think right here we're going to learn a lot about both these guys. Gucci loses. He's got to be cut at one in five. Yeah. Um, and if Nazareth loses to Gucci, then Nazareth really has a ways to go before He'll ever be a ten to one favorite again, mm-hmm. so yep. we'll see. I agree. But uh, I am excited about this next fight here. Uh, we've got Nordin Talib at one seventy, and this is fight. It's at one seventy. Nordin Talib yes. versus John Tarzan Strickland, um, and 
I will be breaking down Sean Strickland, who I got confused with George Sullivan for a second until I looked at him. <laughs> so, <coughs> not sure why that is my own personal <coughs> random weird thing, but I will admit that I was going through my old notes looking for George Sullivan's notes. I was looking for Sean Strickland's name, and I could not find him through all my notes. And I was like, "Where is this guy?" Well, this is the guy who got. Uh, and the reason, another reason, I thought I, you know, had researched him is this is the guy who got wheel kicked by Eliza uh, Zaleski. Yes, it is yes. And so, I mean, I probably have watched that highlight about a thousand times now. So I feel like I, you know, I feel like I already had looked into him before this fight. But anyways. Um, Sean Tarzan Strickland. He's 19 and three overall. He's got a six and three record in the UFC. Um, and uh, yeah, I was pretty surprised to find that out. And his lo- three losses have come to Zaleski, Kamaru Usman, and Sergi- Santiago Ponzinibbio. So, you know, I've just uh, you can't really hold any of those three losses against him. Mm-hmm. As is three of the best guys in the division, um, and you know he's uh, you know his most recent fight was that vicious heel kick KO from Zaliski, um, but uh, he's beat some really good guys. He's beat Court McGee. He's beat Tom Breeze. So um, you know two you know two very good you know large welterweights who fought at, you know at middleweight both those guys. So um, so very well-rounded fighter um and uh i think this is a really really you know good matchup here um you know i think if it's a kickboxing matchup with nordine he's going to be in trouble but i think he's smart enough to realize that realize he can mix his striking with his grappling and uh make toward deep think and uh work here and uh you know i think that he could get it down to the ground and pound out a win um but I really have liked how Nordine's been looking lately, and his striking just looks vicious. Mm-hmm. I think he's one of the better strikers in the division. Um, you know, he hits really hard to the body, where I think Strickland, you know, hasn't shown he's susceptible, but his he looks kind of frail and thin in the body. I mean, he doesn't he's not a stocky, stout welterweight, but uh, you know, again, Strickland's only lost to the best of the best in the division, so. This is a really great, another really great matchup here to find out a lot about both these guys. If Strickland's able to win this, Strickland really becomes a gatekeeper to that upper echelon in the welterweight division, you know. Mm-hmm. And if Nordine's able to get through this, he breaks into that echelon. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's a this is a really interesting matchup, which you know doesn't seem like it has a lot of stakes but it has a lot more stakes than i think people realize strickland wins this he gets the seven and three in the ufc in this first 10 you know i mean that would be 10 fights for strickland in the ufc that's amazing i had no idea i mean it's just uh talk about underrated um the guy who heel kicked him dos santos i think is the most underrated fighter in the ufc right now I really think Eliza Zaleski Dos Santos, I think he is one of the most, I think he is the most underrated fighter in the UFC right now. Um, and uh, I think Strickland is, you know, I'm not going to say he's one of the most, but I think he's definitely underrated here. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, so uh, I've got Nordine with a second or third round finish, but um, it's close. I mean, I, you know, I um, wouldn't be mad if Strickland won. Mm-hmm. You know, I think Strickland, Strickland's a good fighter and doesn't get the credit he deserves. And I apologize for getting him and George Sullivan confused because <laughs> oh, he would destroy he would destroy George Sullivan in a fight. Oh, he'd murder him. <laughs> no okay. offense. Okay, so we've got Nordin Taleb, um, six and three, also in the UFC. Um, so both got the same records. Right. Um, notable wins over Jingling Li, uh, Eric Silva. Um, Oliver Enkamp, which isn't too notable. Um, yeah, it's notable wins are getting less and less notable here. Yeah. <laughs> um, he has a head kick KO over Danny Roberts. Uh, that was beautiful. Um, mm-hmm. So his his losses uh, have come to... Also, great losses. Ponzinibbio, Wally Alves, and this one, this one isn't so great. Um, he lost to Claudio Silva. Um, I was at that fight. That, that fight was in London uh, not too long ago, uh, back in May. On the Darren Till card, no London, no, it was in Liverpool. Um, 
Yeah, extremely disappointed in his last fight. Um, you know, he didn't only get choked out in that fight. He he got really badly mauled in that fight. You know, he took some hard, hard punishment on the ground before giving up his back and his neck. Um, so yeah, that just plays into what you said about uh, Sean Strickland um, yeah. mixing it up uh, with the grappling and maybe able to find a finish on the floor. Um but yeah, Nordin Taleb, great kickboxer, like you said. Um, really, really consistent guy. Um, yeah, but, you know, he, he's 37 now. And, you know, just looking back on his last fight, the way he got finished, you know, you have to start to decline at some point. And I think, you know, he's been overly consistent, really, in the UFC. And I just feel like that, the, you know... The tide is changing now a little bit for Nordin Taleb, I believe. And, you know, he, he's probably the slight favourite in this fight. But Sean Strickland, you know, he, he looked good against Zaleski until that, uh, you know, that spinning wheel kick came. Um, but, yeah, Sean Strickland, I, I completely agree with you. Massively underrated. Um, and I'm going to take I'm gonna take him here. I'm going to give Sean Strickland a... I'm going to give him a decision win. I'm sticking with a lot of decisions on this card, man. It's, it's another hard card to break down. But... Close fights, close fights. Um, yeah, it, I mean, this one is an absolute pick. I'm 115 aside. Mm -hmm. so, so there you go. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a very good matchup and, uh, you know, a really sneakily important matchup for the welterweight division. Um, one of these guys is, you know, going to remain a factor. Strickland, I believe, uh, is... I believe early 30s, um, if I'm not mistaken. So, you know, he's still, you know, he may be, you know, even still in his 20s. Um, he's got those really long arms, hence the nickname uh, Tarzan. You know, I think uh, he could snatch up a, you know, finish um, mm -hmm. here, you know, but I am going to go with Nordine to, you know, hang yeah. on a little bit longer here. So, but uh, really so good fight here. So. Okay. Yeah, we disagree again. We've got a few disagreements here. We'll go okay. through them at the end again. But, yeah, um, yeah, these disagreements, we tend to be pretty close on yep. who's right. Yep. On the uh, so. Conor McGregor-Habib card, you won we had five disagreements that night. You won that one 3-2. So, fair play on that Sweet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We didn't disagree in the main event. No, no. We got that spot on. <laughs> yeah. That was, that was almost right on, but I think... Quite a few people did, so I don't know how much we can really tout our mm -hmm. domain knowledge for calling that one. But anyways, I'm um, ready to move on to uh, that next fight. Yep. Okay, so we have Alex Garcia versus Court McGee. Um, I'll be breaking down Alex Garcia. Um, he comes into this fight 5-4 and four inside the UFC. Um, I believe this is a winnable fight for Alex Garcia. Um, you know, has big knockout power. Um, I think for Garcia to win this fight, um, I think the number one priority for him would be to preserve his gas tank. You know, have a good gas tank if the round goes, you know, in, into round three. Um, you know, Court McGee's only been finished twice in his whole career. So we're going to have to assume that we don't knock out Court McGee here and the fight does go the distance. You know, he needs to be... You know, not looking like Derek Lewis going into the third round. So, you know, I'm not saying Alex Garcia can't knock out Court McGee because he has that knockout power. He he definitely can. But, you know, it's going to be a tough fight. But I just see Alex Garcia being the bully in this fight um, and just controlling the whole fight pretty much. Um, you know, granted, he has got that gas tank going into the third round. Um but yeah, I've got to take Alex Garcia on this one. Um, I'm going to take him to actually hand Court McGee his third loss via TKO. And I'm going to take Alex Garcia in round number two. Okay. Can I just say one thing before I start? I have a real pet peeve with the UFC when they misorder a card. And they've misordered the fights here. Mm -hmm. This... This fight and the Sean Strickland fight should be switched. Yep, I, I agree. I don't understand why Sean Strickland and Nordin Taleb are fighting before Court McGee and, you know, Alex Garcia. I don't get it. Mm -hmm. Court McGee, I, the only thing I can think of is that Court McGee is the ultimate fighter winner and has more of a name and more. But 
he lost to Sean Strickland. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I don't I don't get it. It's just it, and it's just like sometimes I'm just like I feel like the UFC doesn't understand how to promote their own fighters. Mm-hmm. Not that I know way better than them, but it's like you want to promote the best fighter here. And Court McGee is not this guy you thought he was as you were building him up. Yeah. Like he's not. He's you know. But anyways, like I, you know, I just don't get. It. But mm-hmm. uh, a little bit about Court the Crusher McGee. He's uh, 33 years old. Uh, he's died once and come back to life. So they'll bring that up at some point. He was a drug addict. So you know, very cool story. But fights out of the pit. 18 and seven record. Has three TKOs and seven submissions in his 18 wins. 10 and seven record in the UFC. Um. So he does have wins, you know, over Robert Whitaker very early in Robert Whitaker's career, but over Whitaker, mm-hmm. uh, Daniel Steele, I believe, uh, and Ryan Jensen. So I do give him credit because Ryan Jensen is tough to put away, you know. But uh, and some other, you know, less notable wins inside the UFC. Why his losses? Uh, we really should start calling this card the Ponce Nibio. Uh, victims card <laughs> uh, lost to Pons and Nibio which no shame in that um, also Russell Ryan LaFair a loss to uh, I'll say it UFC addict favorite you know personal favorite here Killer B Ben Saunders just mm-hmm. always fighting he's fighting next week by the way again ridiculous but the dude just doesn't stop until he does and then uh, Sean Strickland by the way um, and uh, Court McGee's on a two-fight losing streak, and, um, you know, I'm not, you know, like I said, I just don't get this being matched up after, you know, Strickland's, uh, Strickland-Nordine's fight or whatever. I think uh, this is another really close matchup between two very similar fighters here. So, um, you know, both guys formerly with a lot of hype in the UFC and have seen it pretty much fizzle out. You know, maybe some of it has to do with USADA, maybe not, maybe, who knows. But um, I do like uh, Court McGee to make this fight dirty and be the bully in this fight. So pretty much exactly what you said about Alex Garcia. Mm-hmm. That's what I think Court McGee has to do and will do against Garcia. I think McGee's going to be the bigger, stronger guy. So, um, and I think McGee will look to bring this to the ground where he's going to be a lot better than on the feet mm-hmm. um, compared to Garcia. And uh, I think he'll grind out a decision here in a close one, but I will take court to nice. get the decision. Um, you know, big win for him. Uh, both guys really need it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and court is a slight underdog here at um, minus or plus 155, excuse me. And Garcia is coming back almost minus 200. So started out minus 140 for Garcia, and the money's moved towards Garcia as it's gotten closer. So, um, you know, close fight. We disagree again, so uh, tally it up. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I like uh, Kurt McGee to show some of what made him good enough to beat Robert Whitaker. Mm-hmm. It's always weird when guys like Stefan Struve have wins over Stipe Miocic, you know, and guys like, you know, Court McGee have wins over Robert Whitaker. It's just, you know. Mm-hmm. MMA just, math, it just doesn't work. It doesn't work, and it's just, it's so hard to get that out of your head when you're picking, though. You're mm-hmm. just like, well, I mean, but it really is just, you're never the same fighter going in there, and mm-hmm. it doesn't work. So, it's you know, hard, MMA It's fact, a hard sport to predict, man. That's why we love it. Yeah. <clears throat> it's beautiful. It's beautiful. But, uh, all right, we can uh, move on now to the next fight. Uh, you can go ahead and introduce okay. the So we've matchup. got um, Jean Vellante versus Ed Haman. Um, I'll be breaking down Jean. Um, Jean comes into this fight six and seven inside the UFC. <laughs> so, yeah, very awkward record. Um, <laughs> That's a nice way of putting it. <laughs> um, notable wins, not very many. Um, Corey Anderson, <laughs> uh, Barroso. Uh, which That's is... incredible. Mm-hmm. How did he beat Corey Anderson? I know. You I know? know. Um, we just like, we just have to put that down to Corey Anderson being young. Like <laughs> um, my mistakes. Yeah, so he he has losses to notable guys. Um, OSP, Latifi, Shogun, uh, Patrick Cummins, and Sam Alvey. So you know if if he beat a couple of those guys, 
his record and his resume wouldn't look too bad, but you know it, it it's bad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, <laughs> if he gets these wins, it doesn't look that bad, but it's bad. He, he did get those wins. Yeah, it, it's bad. <laughs> um, but you know, let, let's focus on the positives here. This is a winnable fight. This is a winnable fight for Volante. Um, Ed Haman, you, you know, he's done. He's very much past his prime. Um, you know, I think we're going to see the same Jean Volante we always see. Um, if that's a good thing, probably not. But, you know, you're fighting Ed Haman. So, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm fairly confident Jean could win. But at the same time, you know, just looking at his whole career, it's it's not too impressive. But, you know, you have I've got a pick, um, you know, and... I'm gonna take Jean Volante to to oh god to to somehow find a TKO <laughs> over Ed Haman. and, and, yeah, and, and a... that and that will boost him to a uh, an impressive seven and seven. So we'll go from there, Jean. We'll we'll go from there. Okay, well, you know, he the most interesting thing about Jean Volante is he played football at Hofstra. Other than that, I can't stand him. I will be honest. I just don't like him. I think he's a boring fighter, and uh, I don't think I've ever picked him in the UFC. <laughs> I think he's just one. So spoiler alert: I'm not picking him here either. Um, you know, if I can't pick you against Ed Short Fuse Herman, I don't know who I can really pick you against. <laughs> Anyways, and this fight I wish was buried on the undercard, but you know, although I watch all the fights, I do. I just wish. I believe this fight is, you know, the second fight on the main card. Yeah. You know, so I, I don't know why it's on the main card, basically. I just don't get it. Um, you know, um, yeah, I agree. Herman is definitely done. Um, 23 and 13 record, though. Six TKOs and 13 subs in those 23 wins. So pretty good finishing rate for sure. Um, awkward record of 10, 10, and 1 in the UFC. <laughs> Um, so he's fought a lot. Um, he's beaten. So this is what my notes say. He's beaten guys as good as Bosch and Natal. Wow. So in 21 win or 21 fights, his best two wins are Bosch and Natal. So like other guys who can boast something like that are like guys like Andrew Craig, you know. And uh, I mean, but anyways, his losses have come to. Talis Latis, uh, Derek Brunson, uh, Nikita Krylov by that by beautiful karate kick, and then CB Dalloway. Um, Krylov and CB Dalloway are his last two losses. So he's lost to CB Dalloway <laughs> in the last. So yeah, um, he has, or you know, in the last two years actually, because he hasn't fought in over a year. Um, and you definitely, I think everybody's questioning how much Ed Herman has left, um, including Ed Herman probably. Um, and you, you know, again, you know, if your last two losses end up being Stevie Dalloway and John Volante, you have to stop. Mm -hmm. Period. You can't fight. Don't fight again, please. You know, I, you know, I still think Herman is still good enough to win this fight and get a decision, and I can't break my streak of never picking John Volante. <laughs> and more times than not, it pays off not to pick him by way of his record. Mm -hmm. So I will continue to pick against him and have – I'm going to have Herman get a third-round finish. Wow. Just find, like, find a finish somehow. Mm -hmm. They'll both be exhausted, and Herman will just be a little better. Yeah. Uh, John Volante, this just, you know, whatever. John Volante is a minus 260 favorite. Um, I'm never betting on John Volante, so, you know, I'm the wrong person to ask here, but I think that's ridiculous. I think this is close to a pick em, if not slightly not a pick em, but pretty close. Yeah. It's, uh, it's going to be a fun, 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 this, probably not fun, but funny. Funny fight. Well, yeah, hopefully it's funny. It feels like a Bellator fight. Mm -hmm. It feels like a fight Bellator would have early on. It's like big main card to like try to. P F. Yeah, I, yeah, seriously, I would love for that to. I mean, these guys would. I don't think these guys. I'm not sure if either one of these guys beats Sean O'Connell. Not the <laughs> Sean O'Connell I saw this past weekend. 
<laughs> he was knocking out bitches. It was hilarious, man. I was just like, wow, Sean O'Connell looks like a stud over here. Like, and he's about to fight for a million dollars. Like him or Vinny Magalhaes, two guys who couldn't sniff the octagon hardly, are fighting for a million dollars. It's like how many fighters in the UFC have made a million dollars? Less than ten. It's kind of money. Okay. I mean, a million, yeah, so, anyways, I don't want to get too distracted here, but anything not to talk about John Vellante. <laughs> if he's a list, I apologize, but, you know, I'm going to just bet he's not and, you know, keep trashing him a little bit until he's out of the UFC. Uh, so, which we are yet to be agree a- on the main card yet. Yeah, this is awesome. Mm-hmm. We're not, we haven't agreed yet, um... I believe you picked the favorite so far in the fight, so yes. props to you there. So, you know, that's not looking good for me. <laughs> and uh, But we'll see. You know, this is why we watch the fights. Um, moving on to the bantamweight division, we have Jonathan Martinez making his UFC debut versus Andre Sakuman, who I pronounce Soccer Mom, and yep. will be pronouncing Soccer Mom for the rest of the show here. Yes, so, um, with all due respect to Soccer Mom, um, I will be breaking down Jonathan Martinez making his UFC debut. He's uh, 32 years old, um, but he's 9 and 1. His one loss coming by a legal, by a legal knee against Matt Danger Schnell. Um, so, Martinez, he's a. Uh, dangerous uh striker i've been able to look up some of his uh tape on youtube here and watch a few of his fights he's got some really diverse striking um and a good slick submission game he's aggressive um and uh i think he's coming in way under under the radar for his debut here and i think a guy like soccer mom's a very willing dance partner and uh is gonna make this a really entertaining fight um, I think Soccer Mom is good, but, you know, we've seen his fight IQs a little questionable at times. And um, I think that uh, Martinez is going to, you know, look to keep this on the feet for the most part and make it a striking, you know, fight and uh, outstrike Soccer Mom. And uh, I think he gets a finish here in the second round and, uh, you know, maybe a flying knee or some sort of elbow, but he has a lot of different finishes of that variety. So I think he's going to look to make a statement here against Soccer Mom. And, uh, you know, um, I think he's going to have an impressive debut. I like the look of him so far. Nice. Okay, so we have Soccer Mom um, comes into this fight one and three inside the UFC. Um, his record isn't as bad as his fight IQ, though, so that's one thing. Um, <laughs> you're talking about guys getting cut earlier on. Um, this is definitely one we should be speaking about. If he can't beat um, Jonathan Martinez, um, you're one and four. Um, with people speaking about how bad your fight IQ is, uh, it's not looking good. Um, if anyone can remember his fight against uh, O'Malley, um, at one point in the third round, O'Malley basically had one leg. Um, so yeah, Soccer Mum did what anyone shouldn't do. Um, he actually took O'Malley down. He he actually shot and took O'Malley down when O'Malley was standing on one leg saying, hey, look, I only have one leg. So The ref was about to stop the fight. Mm-hmm. You know, all you had to do there is just... Force step, in advance. Yep, step back and say, come to the middle of the octagon. Oh, wait, you can't walk. Okay, so that's my win. And he, could, he didn't yeah. want to do that. Um, and I'll tell you why he didn't want to do that. Um, O'Malley absolutely beat the brakes off of him for about 12 to 13 minutes and he beat him so bad that when O'Malley was in the position where he only had one leg Soccer Mum just said to himself oh my god the beating is over the beating is over you can't move let me take you down okay so you know fighting there through you know he's fighting out of survival I know that's what every what, what pretty much every guy does when they get into the octagon but then you know there's being intelligent enough to know what you need to do at certain times and when you see a guy standing on one leg if you can't make the the um you know if you can't make it aware to yourself that at this point I don't take down my opponent you know that I just I just don't know what to say about that um so yeah, he, his losses come to uh, O'Malley, Perez, um, someone else. I can't remember who else, but his other two losses were split losses. Um, 
He's actually got a notable camp as well, fighting out of uh, Black Zillions. Uh, Henry Hoof, the head coach there. Um, decent jiu-jitsu coaches. Um, top guys there like Eddie Alvarez, Volkan, Donny, uh, Danny Roberts, uh, Michael Johnson. Uh, ton, loads more, you know. So he, he's fighting out of a great camp. Um, just it's, it's a shame he's not an animal like these guys. Um, but yeah, you know... <laughs> We're going to disagree again, and I feel bad. For, I feel bad for disagreeing with you because, you know, he he's got such bad fight IQ. But you know, for me, he 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 doesn't need to just win this fight. He needs to win it so convincingly, because you know, one in three with just terrible fight IQ in his last fight. And just, it's not looking good. So, I'm I'm going to take him. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. I don't feel great about it. I'm not confident. Um, don't bet on this fight. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm going to take Soccer Mum via, hopefully, a dominant decision. Man, I wonder if we're going to agree on this card. Um, you know, I have to imagine we're going to agree on one of these fights specifically. Yes. But yes. other than that one, I wonder... Uh, if we're going to agree on the rest of this card, I really do. because. Uh, but anyways, Soccer Mom is the favorite once again. You are picking all the favorites here. This uh, I am not lining myself up here at all. I picked yeah. all underdogs. The, the I only a underdog lot of... I've got right now is literally the, the start of the card. Yes, in Ayari yeah. is the only dog I'm feeling, I'm feeling yeah, good about. Yeah, so... You know, bef- you know, a little bit of behind the scenes here. Before we started the podcast, I would have the occasional... Four and twelve. <laughs> yeah. So just, this may be that. Um, we'll see though. I'm. I've really looked into these fights, and I feel very good about Martinez here. I think a lot of people are going to know about Jonathan Martinez after this fight. In all seriousness, so mm-hmm. um, he has the plus one seventy five to the minus two thirty favorite though. So once again, you're picking the favorite. Um, good for you. Thank but, you. I don't um, feel good about it. That one, or, or Volante, either. Those two, yeah. I don't feel good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. When I really look at these, I don't feel bad about who I'm picking against. Mm-hmm. I'm picking in the love of IQ. So, um, anyways, uh, you want to go ahead and introduce uh, the next yes. match up here? And um, off? Who do we have here? We have... Uh, Misha. Misha. Okay, so... Misha Serkanov. Um... 13 and 4 overall record. Um, his last two fights. Uh, uh, he's fighting Patrick Cummins, by the way. Um, yep. His last two fights. So against against Glover Teixeira. Um, you know, really disappointing. Um, you know, I thought he'd be in control of the grappling, but you know, not really much there. Um, ended up getting choked out by Glover, and you know, Glover's really coming towards the end now. So you know, really not impressed there. Um, even against Volkan, you know, really not impressed there either. Um, you know, Didn't he lose in like 10 seconds against yeah, Volkan? Yeah, that, w- that was literally the start of, of uh, no time. After that, uh, no time went and did that to uh, Jimmy Manoir with, uh, yeah. with a nasty uppercut. But um, yeah, Misha Serkinov, man, you know, he, I believe he's 3-2 and two inside the UFC. You know, really looked good in the first few, first few fights in the UFC. But those two losses just... You know, it looked like that that surprise knockout to um, Volkan, it, it just looked like he took his confidence a bit. Um, you know, Patrick Cummins, big underdog, I believe, in this fight. And it's, you know, he shouldn't be that much of an underdog because we've seen how Misha's lost in his last two fights. And, you know, Patrick Cummins can, can definitely do that. You know, Patrick Cummins, in my opinion, has one job. And that's simply not to be taken down and have Misha Serkinov take top position because that's one thing Misha Serkinov is very, very good at is uh, controlling his opponent whilst on top. Um, but we did see Glover Teixeira um, reverse top position and, and take his back. But, you know, that's Glover Teixeira, um, very seasoned fighter. You know, Patrick Cummins most likely doesn't do that. Um, so, so for me, Patrick Cummins uh, has one job and that's not to be taken down. Um but yeah, like I say, Misha Serkinov, man, he looked so good in his first few fights, you know, and I think he, he has to get back in the win column here. 
So, you know, I'm going to assume Patrick Commons' one job isn't successful. Um, I'm going to assume Misha, Misha Serkanov does take down Patrick Cummins and uh, finds the TKO finish. Um, a little bit like Corey Anderson, <clears throat> you know, just taking him down. Um, I think Misha Serkanov will find the finish on the ground in round number two. Okay, so you broke down <clears throat> Misha just now. Um, yes. And I'm going to be breaking down Mr. Patrick Cummings. Uh, he uh, is a very good wrestler. Um, he's, you know, before the UFC had quite the, you know, urban legend kind of following about, you know, how he was an Olympic alternate for the wrestling team and how he couldn't find fights anywhere and everybody was avoiding him. Uh, since coming to UFC, he's been so, so, um, you know, he had a tough, obviously debut. Um, and you know, since then he's been, you know, up and down in the UFC, um, and uh, in all honesty, uh, I just think, you know, that his skill of wrestling uh, is going to be canceled out by Misha. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Misha is gonna, the better MMA wrestler, um, you know, and uh, I think Misha, we are going to agree on this fight. Um, oh, we are. I did, Yeah. I think Misha gets the finish in the second round by arm triangle, though. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to be a submission, um, but I think that it will be a... I hope it's a, you know, dominant performance. Uh, Misha really had quite a bit of hype on him coming into the UFC. Um, and uh, that's really fizzled out in these last couple. Um, and uh, I just wonder if he has the confidence and the chin to, uh, you know, come back from it. You know, if not, Cummins can catch him and finish him, I think. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, if Cummins beats you, then I really, you know, I'm going to have a hard time picking you against anybody other than John Volante. Mm-hmm. So, you yeah. know, we'll see. So, um, but I agree with you. So mm-hmm. we do agree. And surprise, surprise, you're picking the favorite again. <laughs> minus, and minus 500 favorite here. And that's what um, I mean, man. That That is just so that's surprising a to favorite. me. Because Patrick Cummins is, you know, he he's that guy who just wants to stand and bang. And if, mm-hmm. if Misha, you know... If he takes him down and let's just say Patrick Cummins gets up because he did against uh, Corey Anderson and, you know, Corey yeah. Anderson, great wrestler. Um, right. So if he does get up and he starts to, you know, tee off on Misha, how is Misha going to deal with that? Because, you know, the way he got knocked out against Vulcan Ozdemir, you know, is clearly taking his soul a little bit. Yeah. It's, uh, I mean, again, like he's a minus 500 favorite, he, massive favorite again, you know, so. Um, kind of surprising, you know, two fight losing streak to have that such be such a favorite. Mm-hmm. Crazy. Um, but you know, I finally agree with you. So um, moving on to the next fight here, at 145 pounds. Yes. We have the goat, Artem Lobov, versus Michael. The Menace Johnson. I will give Volk or I will give. I mean, sorry, not Volkov. I will give Lobov the honors of going second. I will introduce the challenger, Michael the Menace Johnson. Eighteen and thirteen, uh, ten and eight record in the UFC. Uh, Michael Johnson's what they call a hard hitter. And that has translated down to 145, um, his last fight. However, he showed an increased willingness to follow a game plan um, against Andre Feely. Uh, it was a, definitely a close fight. Um, but, uh, you know, I was uh, decently impressed with and encouraged by uh, his performance there. And I think uh, this is um, as winnable a fight as there, there gets in the UFC against... Uh, Artem Lobov, in all honest, in all seriousness, uh, I just think Artem Lobov is trash, and uh, I think that a matchup here against Michael Johnson is, you know, he's primed to get KO'd, and I think he does in the first round by a left hook, um, gets KO'd hard. So I'll take Michael Johnson to win. Um, you know, Michael Johnson, you know. Up and down record in the UFC definitely has beat some good guys like Dustin Poirier and whatnot, you know. Um, so I think that he gets to win here. 
Mm-hmm. Nice. Okay, so we have our Tom, uh, the greatest of all time, Lobov, uh, comes into this fight with a record, with a overall record of 14 and 14, which is just that's uh, that's you know, wow. Um, inside the UFC, two and four which is also amazing. Um, notable wins, none, which is also great. Uh, notable <laughs> losses, Alex White, Cub Swanson, uh, Touchy Feely. Um, so yeah, so how does the Conor McGregor prodigy win this fight? Um, he has to say a good prayer before getting into the octagon and uh, yeah, just, you know, throw some hands um, and just, just pray, you know, just, you know, in my opinion, he has a puncher's chance. That's about it. Uh, Michael Johnson, you know, like you said, hard hitter, um, even in the 155 division, um, you know, Michael Johnson has a win over Tony Ferguson. So, you know, moving down to 145, fighting against guys smaller than he's used to fighting, um, you know, he's definitely going to hurt these guys. Um, yeah, in, in Michael Johnson's last fight against, uh, Touchy Feely, you know, I was impressed with both guys. Personally, I gave that split win, that split decision to uh, Andre Feely, but, you know, I wasn't angry because really, really close fight. Um, yeah. But, yeah, um, I'd I'd be that amazed if Artem Lobov won this fight. I'd be more amazed than um, Henry Cejudo beating Demetrius Johnson, even though I predicted it, still amazed. Uh, I'd be more amazed than Rose beating JJ first time round. I'd be just... Wow, it would it would amaze me if Artem Lobov could do anything to Michael Johnson. I mean, Michael Johnson has shown the ability to choke. He has. Like I would, I would not rank it on the level of any of those fights, with all due respect. Mm-hmm. Like so, I think if if he loses, I'm going to just be like, figures. That's Michael Johnson. Mm-hmm. That's that's how surprised I'll be, mm-hmm. honestly. Because like, Michael Johnson's mental game and everything like that is so questionable. Mm-hmm. It is. But you've got to remember, you know, those first three minutes against Habib, just you've got to give like so much credit to Michael Johnson because not even Conor McGregor had those moments. You know, not even uh, Al LaQuenta had those moments. RDA never had those moments, you know? Um, yeah, against, no, I agree. Uh, Darren Elkins, you know... It backs up your point exactly, exactly. You know, really choked that fight. Um, but you know, Darren, Darren Hopkins, you know, just such a grinder. You know, one of the most impressive comeback wins of all time um, against uh, Bektich. Um But yeah, I just, I just really don't see Artem Lobov doing anything um, over the course of the fight that's gonna do anything to Michael Johnson. Um, for me, it's literally can Artem Lobov catch him, and can he catch him real good? You know. Um, you know, trains with Conor McGregor and all those kind of guys. So, you know, it's it, like I say about soccer mum. It's just a shame um, the guys he trains with, the animals he trains with. He's not an animal himself. You know, he yeah, he's he's the goat. But you know, Michael Johnson <laughs> for me, he is a goat. I agree with you. Round one, TKO for Michael Johnson. All right, so we both have Artem Lobov dipping his record under 500 to 14 and 15, and maintaining in the UFC too. <laughs> he won't yes, get cut. Do. He definitely won't get cut after this loss either. Okay, um, so the main event. Yep. The main we got. Event. Go ahead. We have Volkan Ozdemir. Um, and before this podcast, I actually said to my partner here, I said, how how dope would it be if it wasn't Volkan Ozdemir and it was actually Ozdemir Volkan? Because to me, that sounds, that sounds you know, dangerous. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, we've got Volkan Ozdemir versus Lionheart Smith, Anthony Smith. Um, go ahead, break down, break down Volkan for me. All right, a little bit about Ostemir Vulcan or Vulcan Ostemir, whichever you prefer. Uh, Fifteen and two record. He's got eleven TKOs. He's got no time for decisions most of the time. Uh, three and one in the UFC with his loss coming to Daniel Cormier by knockout in his last fight. Um, he goes in there and he likes to throw bombs, at least in his UFC career, um, and doesn't, um, you know, look to take the fight too many places like the clinch he likes to keep it in boxing range in general uh, a little bit of dirty boxing as well but uh, 
you know, I do think uh, Smith is the more well-rounded of the two fighters, um, but I think Ozemir hits way harder. And Smith's shown that he's very hittable, uh, especially early on in fights. And uh, I'm just not sure if he's going to be able to take that punishment early on to withstand it to get it later into the fight where I think Smith has the advantage and is able to gas him out. Uh, and uh, so I think that uh, Ozemir... Uh, reestablishes himself within the division, gets a first round knockout actually, um, and derails this uh, hype that uh, Anthony Smith has really uh, started to earn. Um, I think Anthony Smith is a good fighter, but uh, I just think fighting a real primed uh, 205er here in Ozdemir, I think Ozdemir is going to learn from the DC fight and uh, make a statement and get another first round finish. Nice. Okay, so we have uh, Lionheart Smith um, comes into this fight 6-2 and two inside the UFC. Um, notable wins over Andrew Sanchez, Hector Lombard, Rashad Evans, uh, Shogun. Um, losses to Thiago Santos and Cesar Ferreira. Um, Smith, naturally a middleweight, you know, recently moved up to 205. <coughs> um... Yeah, 2-0 at 205, um, beating two well-past-their-prime fighters in uh, Rashad mm-hmm. Evans and Shogun. Um, I believe this would be his first real fight at 205. Um, I think it would be mainly a stand-up fight. Um, I don't think Vulcan Ozdemir is going to take down Anthony Smith. Um, you know, especially in Vulcan's last fight where DC really, you know hit him with some reality, you know, showed him, look, this is what it's like going to the ground uh, with a world cl- world-class world wrestler. Um, you know, w- when you get holding the crucifix like that and beaten up, you know, it, it, it it's probably worse than getting knocked out. You know, when you, you know, it's it's soul-taking. It's it's really getting beat up. It, it, it's bad, you know. You you look at Francis Ngannou where he got beat up over the course of 25 minutes. Um, sometimes that's worse than getting knocked out. Um, so yeah, I, I look at this as being mainly a stand-up fight, um, and especially, you know, like you said, Vulcan Ozdemir, 11 TKOs, you know, no time, you know, he, he's looking for the knockout, and so is Anthony Smith, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm gonna base my decision based off of who, who has the ability to finish the fight on the feet, um, you know, Volkan Ozdemir is going to be the bigger guy, but not in height or reach. Um, he's going to be the bigger guy in, in brute strength and size, you know, like thickness. So, you know, that that, that doesn't really matter too much, you know. Unless Volkan Ozdemir connects, um, he definitely punches harder. Um, <clears throat> really tough fight to predict, man. It's such a fun main event. Yeah, but, it is. Um, I really like this fight. Yeah, um... I just feel if 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 Anthony Smith can can just fight at a, a range, you know, and just sort of go three or four minutes with Vulcan, and you know, I believe as the fight goes on, it becomes more his fight. Um, but having said that, I I don't see this fight going past the third round. I really do see one of these guys clipping clipping each other, and you know, it, it's such a such a hard main event to predict. But I'm I'm actually gonna we're gonna disagree again. We're gonna disagree on the Lovely. main event. Um, Love it. In my favour, I am about three three two or four one ahead. No, four three two three two ahead on the main events on this channel. So we could be getting tied up here. But I'm going okay. to take Anthony Smith to find the TKO against Vulcan Ozdemir in round number two. Well, I'm glad to say you finally picked an underdog, so yes. congratulations. Yes, and the price of Anthony, Anthony Smith <laughs> is, in my opinion, is so good. It's incredible. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to definitely be taking advantage of that. Yeah, it's pl- he's a plus 155, so he's a decent underdog. Uh, minus 190 coming back for Ozdemir. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and uh, I, uh, I was surprised. I expected the odds to be with Smith. Um, I just feel like as it gets closer to a fight, those this is going to become a pick 'em. Yeah. Um, so get your money in now as an underdog for Smith if you believe in it, um, because I don't think he's going to be an underdog by way ends. So mm-hmm. I think that the hype is going to build up as the week goes on. But it's like you look at the guy; he beat Shogun in 
Evans and is calling out John Jones. It's like, dude, come on. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, like, anyways, um, I really am excited about this card, so uh, let's uh, just go back through it real quick, um, and we can uh, – we have a few fights we disagree on, so uh, yes. that's always that's always interesting. So it's maybe a disaster card for me. I picked a lot of underdogs, so mm-hmm. here we go. All right, we got Stevie Ray and Je- Yesin Ayari. Um, I have Stevie Ray. Yep, I've got Yesin Ayari. It's my first underdog on the card, and I've got him via decision. Yep, I'll take the favorite, Stevie Ray, by decision or late uh, finish. Uh, next on the fights, we have at heavyweight Marcelo Golm versus Arjan Euler. I have Golm. Yep, I the agree. Underdog. Yep, I'm with you on that underdog pick, uh, Marcelo Golm okay. via decision. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a sneaky underdog pick for sure, but we'll see. Maybe Bueller just had a brain fart in there and uh, will come in looking much more polished as an MMA product. Mm-hmm. Um, next up, we have at 155, Tay Edwards versus Don Madge. With all respect to Don Madge, I have Tay Edwards. Yep, I agree with you. Tay Edwards via decision. All right, look at all that. Look at all that agreement. <laughs> next up, we have Sarah Marias or Maras versus Talita Bernardo. I have Talita. Yep, I believe Sarah Maras will be a favorite for the first time in her UFC fights. And she can get the finish via submission in round number two. Yep, she's a pretty decent favorite at, um, at that. So, next up we have Calvin Qatar versus Chris Fishgold at 145. And I have I have Calvin Qatar. Unfortunately, I wanted to pick Chris Fishgold, but I do have Calvin Qatar. Yep. I have Calvin Qatar too via um, TKO in round number one. Yeah, I think uh, I think that I uh, will make that my fight of the night too. So I think that I actually no, I'm gonna I'm gonna save that actually. Never mind. But I think this is a sneaky good fight. I really like Chris Fishgold, and uh, if he wins, I'm really excited to see. You know, I'm excited to see what's next, regardless of who wins this. But. Mm-hmm. Um, Anyways, not my fight tonight, but it's, that's a really good fight right there, I think. Um, next up, we have Nazaret Has Has Pretz versus Tibor Guti. I will take Nazaret, or no Tibor. I'll take Tibor. Live underdog. That's mm-hmm. right. I'll take Tibor. Yep, I've got Nazaret yep. via a um, dominant decision. Yeah, I'll take Tibor, and I'll take Tibor to. Uh, he got a less dominant decision. Nice. Um, at 170, we have Sean Strickland versus Nordin Talib. Um, I reluctantly have Nordin, but I think it's going to be a really close fight, but I just think Nordin's going to get the finish here. Yep, I have Sean Strickland via decision. Yeah, and that is my fight of the night, actually. Nice. I think, it's gonna be, I think that's going to be a really good fight. Um, Court, yep, Court McGee versus Alex Garcia, which should be before this fight, but whatever. Um, I have Court McGee. Yep. Uh, by this decision. Will, this will be our fifth disagreement um, so far on the card, yep. and I have Alex Garcia via TKO in round number two. Five disagreements already. That's awesome. Next up, our boy John Volante versus Ed Short Fuse Herman. I am taking Ed Herman. Yep, I wish. By late uh, finish, third yes. round. Yep, I wish I didn't have to pick. Uh, I wish this wasn't a fight. Um, but yeah, I'm taking Jean Volante. This is our sixth disagreement. Uh, I'm going to take him via TKO. Yep, Jean Volante is the heavy favorite. Just ridiculous. Um, next up, Andre Soccer Mom versus Jonathan Martinez. I am taking Jonathan Martinez. Yep. Seventh. By second round TKO. Nice. Seventh disagreement. Um, soccer mum via dominant decision. Yeah, enjoy some of these guys who you're taking in the disagreement. <laughs> uh, next up, we got Misha Serkinov versus Patrick Cummins. 
we finally agree, I believe, Misha Sirkonov for me yep. by a second round finish. Yep. Uh, I've got completely the same. Uh, Misha Sirkonov, round two, TKO. All right. And then we have the GOAT in the co event of the evening. We have Michael the Menace Johnson facing off against the GOAT, Artem Lobov. Uh, we both are going against the GOAT here, taking Michael Johnson the favorite. Yep. We're going against the greatest of all time here, um, Michael Johnson, round okay. one, TKO. Yeah, and uh, that will dip uh, Artem to under 500 again, you know, just barely, <laughs> but under 500. And then the main event of the evening, we got a good one. Volkan Ostomir or Ostomir Volkan versus Anthony Smith. I am taking, it doesn't matter how you say his name, Volkan. Yep. Bye. First round, KO. Nice. Um, yep, eight eight disagreements. This is the eighth disagreement on the card. So this card, you know, wow, eight disagreements. Um, yep, I'm going to take Someone... the uh, underdog here, Anthony Smith, to get the TKO in round number two. All right. Well, um, do you have a pick for fight of the night? I do. I believe also I was um, I was right on my fight of the night for the Connor Habib card. Um, I'm not sure if there was more than one fight of the night or because sometimes they usually do that. But I, I believe it was the Tony Ferguson Pettis. Oh yeah, you know you absolutely nailed that. Yeah. Shout out to Tony Ferguson. Mm-hmm. He absolutely deserves the next shot at well, the card or yeah. at the title. By the way, mm-hmm. absolutely, he's incredible. So yep, and my um, fight of the night would be uh, the main event. I'm gonna take it to. Five minutes, six, seven minutes of pure stand-up, and uh, yeah, I think it's going to be great. All right, well, uh, yeah, I'm just glad to be back in the groove with the UFC eight straight cards here. We are going to be covering all of them throughout the rest of the new year, or throughout to the new year. So, um, yeah, we aren't missing one, so we will see you uh shortly sorry we were a little late getting this one up but uh we will have the next one up by monday Mm -hmm. so um yeah we are uh ready to go here and uh i'm just looking forward to these fights so uh unless you have anything else i am uh signing off yeah um yeah i'm just uh i'm excited to be back man uh leave your picks leave your picks down below and uh yeah we're gonna have a lot yeah we'll put the time but we'll put the time stamps and everything as usual. If you want to skip to a certain uh, matchup, um, you know, we'll put, um, you know, we'll have our pick updates in the bottom here and uh, eight disagreements on this one. So uh, I'm looking forward to talking mm-hmm. to you on Monday. One of us, I hope, has a lot to brag about. Yes. I would love for one of us to get well, all eight right. One of us is going to have a great card and one of us is not going to have the greatest card but you know that it could be mixed it could really be mixed still so yeah this is this is the beauty of this sport is that uh you know we don't know and uh there's just a lot of interesting matchups on this card and uh definitely one for hardcore fans but uh, that's what we're here for and we appreciate any listeners uh all the comments all the likes um it's really you know meant a lot and uh i've enjoyed doing this mm-hmm. so until next time i will uh Talk to you next time, Mr. Layden. Yep, you too, bro. Until next time, guys. Peace. Peace.